Turning now to the southern border crisis, a report from the Department of Homeland Security shows this. The Biden administration releasing nearly 118,000 migrants into the U.S. just in April alone. That's more than the population of the president's hometown in Scranton, Pennsylvania. For the latest, let's check in with our border correspondent, Jason Jones, this morning. Jason, good morning to you. Emma, good morning to you as well. At the same time that information came out yesterday, U.S. Customs and Border Protection also released their final April numbers showing the number of apprehensions at the southwest border sitting at a whopping 234,000. We've never seen those kind of numbers for just one month in the month of April. That's a first. But take a listen to what DHS Secretary Mayorkas had to say about it. We are preparing for the end of Title 42 based on the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's decision that it will end on May 23rd. That does not mean that the border is open beginning on May 23rd. Well, while the secretary says the border is not open, his own data from his own agency says otherwise, as we're in the worst border crisis in American history. In the last seven months, this now puts us just shy, Emma, of 1.3 million apprehensions. When we look for the month of April at gotaways from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, those are people who were able to get by Border Patrol agents, meaning that someone was seen crossing into the country, a sensor picked them up, or sign on the ground was read. In one month alone, 58,000, not just to stop there, for a border that's supposedly secure, as the DHS secretary there is saying, we also have to remember that we're in the worst overdose death crisis in American history at 107,622. So you've got to ask yourself, how can you say that border is secure? Because it's not. And Jason, as Title 42 is set to expire again, really, within the coming days, do we have any prediction as to how many migrants might attempt to cross into this country daily? DHS Secretary's own intelligence service uh, from the intelligence and analysis section is saying that they can see an upward of 18 thousand apprehensions per day at some point. Now, where we are right now, Emma, is 7,800 per day based on the new data that just came out yesterday. So I can tell you this, that back in the pipeline all the way down to South America, we're looking at about 550 per day crossing through the Darien Gap right now. And the numbers in Mexico of people are just pouring in. There's right now mostly Cubans, Venezuelans, and Nicaraguans. So we're going to see if they're going to reach that number. I think that's a little high, to be honest with you. I don't even know that CBP could count that many people because I don't think they've got the personnel in place right now. So we'll see how it unfolds. But I can tell you this, the numbers are continuing to climb day after day. And the data from the U.S. government shows that. Right. The trend we're seeing only increasing. Jason Jones with the very latest. Jason, thank you so much. Continuing our conversation on the immigration crisis, we're joined now by Republican Congressman from Montana, Matt Rosendale. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Again, those April numbers just coming in, another month of record-setting apprehensions. What does that tell you about the state of our border? Yeah, we don't have operational control over our southern border, which has been mandated in statute back in uh, the early 2000s. Uh, Emma, 234,000 illegals last month alone. If we do continue that trend for four months, for four months, you already surpass the entire population of Montana. This is just unbelievable, the invasion that is taking place on our southern border. And along with that, not only are we bringing in all of these people that are going to be completely dependent upon our social safety net, which means that the taxpayers across the nation are going to have to absorb that cost. We also have all the human trafficking that's coming through. We have the drugs that are flowing across our border. 105,000 people died in our country last year from drug overdoses. The vast majority of that was from fentanyl that came directly across the southern border. We literally have a chemical attack taking place on our country right now, and the Biden administration is doing nothing to stop it. As a matter of fact, as you just heard from Jason, the policies that Mayorkas is trying to put in place will simply make it worse. We've also seen how dangerous the journeys can be. Whether these migrants are coming from different countries in South or Central America, you have to cross into the United States, especially as the summer months get warmer, maybe less access to water. It is a dangerous journey, and considering there are young children who also uh, make the journey, that's also something that, that's not often talked about. 
The, the human suffering isn't talked about much at all. And I've been down to the border two times now myself and looked at it. They have trees with women's underwear hanging in them. They call rape trees, where the cartels take advantage of these minors, these young girls, and they are raped and they throw their undergarments in a tree. We know that everyone that comes across the border is obligated to pay anywhere from $3,000 to $7,000. They don't have that. We see the impoverished conditions that they are coming from and living in. And so they are obligated to pay that to the cartel after they cross the border, which means that they're either uh, forced into human trafficking and prostitution or as a meal to bring drugs back across the border or just into indentured servitude where when they do find a low-wage job because they're here illegally yeah. that they have to send a certain percentage of that back to the cartel continuing to enrich this criminal enterprise I don't understand well a year ago when when Secretary Mayorkas came out and said we have a plan we have a plan just give us time we're seeing his plan pay out. His plan is to eliminate the southern border, to allow everyone to come in. And, and what concerns me as much as any of all of that are the 750,000 getaways that came into our country last year. We don't know what criminal element came in with that. We don't know what terrorists have entered our country with those group of individuals. This is a really big problem. And I don't believe that we're going to see the full impact of it for another decade. Mm. You have concerns about the vetting process or just lack of uh, knowing who these individuals are. Let me ask you, though, about specifically Title 42. We know this was a pandemic-related policy. Again, essentially, you could send people back because we were in the middle of uh, COVID. This came up with Dr. Anthony Fauci yesterday. Here's Senator Marco Rubio with his questions for Dr. Fauci. Let's listen. How do we tell American citizens if you test positive, even even if it's dead virus that's been in your system for 10 days, because you can test positive days after you're no longer infectious, and you can't enter the, your own country, but people, if you arrive illegally, whether you test positive or not, if you say the magic words for asylum, you get to stay. I don't have the answer to that. I mean, we work with our CDC colleagues to continue to examine the feasibility of that and the desirability of that. We're just trying to make sense of it, sir. What do you gather? You, you can't. Uh, Dr. Fauci has become a propagandist, and, and everyone uh, across the nation understands that, and he has very, very little credibility. Uh, Title 42 is just that. It's a public health statute, and it's supposed to keep us from allowing folks to enter our country that come from countries that demonstrate they have a communicable disease. But this is just one little a small portion of, of a tool that we can use to keep our border safe. That's why I joined my, my good friend, Chip Roy, from Texas to sign on legislation that's going to completely close down the border. What we have to do is change the rules of engagement that our Border Patrol is utilizing right now to stop people from entering our country that are trying to utilize, whether it's Title 42 or asylum, uh, until we have operational control over our border. And the definition that is in statute is pretty clear uh, that we do not have operational control mm -hmm. over our border. And this is why we see this, this wave of humanity just streaming in without having any pushback whatsoever. And it's, and it's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a reporter there, and we are bringing our viewers the very latest on what's happening. Congressman Matt Rosendale joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. We Emma, appreciate thanks for keeping this up on the uh, forefront of, of the news. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.